guys, welcome back to the Music Dictator Reviews. You're back with your boy Dylan, coming at you live with a brand new segment coming up. Before I get started, I do want to say I apologize for being gone for so long. And I figured I should probably give a quick announcement as to why I have been exactly. You see, over the past few five or six months ago, I've been dealing with a lot of stress from school and baseball and friends. And thankfully, I've now gotten all out of the way, pretty much. I mean, I do have finals coming up, but since as a high school junior at my school, I have three exam exemptions, and I'm getting all my hard classes out of the way, so I don't really have to spend too much studying, so I now have time again to do videos, and that's exactly what I plan on doing for the next month or so. Now, as you may have guessed from the title of the video, uh, the new segment I'm starting is called Albums That Shape Me, where I'm going to be reviewing albums that have shaped my personal music taste over the year and what are some of my favorite all-time albums of all time and as my uh, y'all have guessed from the also the title of the video the album that we're going to be reviewing today is one of my favorites of all time at pretty much at the tippy top of the list is is this it by the strokes the strokes are an alternative indie garage band from new york city and they first burst onto the music scene in 2001 with this album, Is This It, which they followed up with Room on Fire in 2003, First Impressions of Earth in 2005, Angles in 2011, and their latest studio album, The Come Down Machine in 2013. In fact, just last year they released their excellent EP called Future Present Past, which I loved. But today we're going to talk about their first ever album, Is This It?, which is widely considered to be, by critics and fans alike, their best album to date. Now, I've had a quite interesting past with The Strokes. In fact, I actually used to hate them back in middle school, mainly because I was an edgy, kind of emo-ish kid or whatever who always wanted to listen to Green Day, My Chemical Romance, and Fall Out Boy. Every once in a while, somehow, I could only listen to Pandora because I didn't want to get Spotify. And, like, the strokes would always come on, and I felt like that it wasn't, like, I don't know how to explain this. I feel stupid saying it. I felt like it wasn't real music because the sounds kind of sounded like electronic y and stuff, and I kind of hated that back then. And I don't even understand why. Like I said, I was an edgy sort of emo ish kid. Whatever, and the strokes would always come on, and I'd always thumbs down their songs because they always mess up my Pandora stations and it would stress me out, you know what I'm saying? So I used to hate them at first, but I later, as you can tell, grew and grew on them until they ultimately became my second favorite band of all time. Okay, so let's get started with the title track, Is This It?, which is the first track off the album, which I consider a great, amazing opening track. You know, even though it's slower and softer than a lot of the stroke songs that we hear, I feel like it's a, still a very great track. Julian Casablanca's vocals are very somber and slow, and even though technically aren't great, it's still a great sounding track like the way he uses it, and how he kind of has a build up towards the end of the track that you hear. It's kind of like the typical, like, uh, stereotypical, like the doot, 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 doot. Of the drums that you hear in a lot of songs it helps set the t tone for the album where it's, it's still kind of a somber sounding album but still full of a bunch of great tracks the next off of the album is the modern age which is one of the first of many songs off this album that i completely fell in love with and i just love how it's kind of like you can it builds off of the sort of the build-up that occurred towards the end of the first track it kind of builds off of that and it's kind of energetic and it talks about and it's kind of got an energetic fast-paced chorus that Casablanca's uh, vocals are very great in and uh, Albert Hammond Jr.'s guitar playing is just crazy too and it's just another great kind of bouncy off the walls track especially when the chorus hits and it's uh, <clears throat> I love how uh, I even love Fabio's drumming and the even Nikolai's uh, bass line is just a great tune, you know what I'm saying? Soma, the third track off the album, is a very, like, it's a very, it's a mid-tempo track, I would say. It's not slow like the opener, but it's not fast-paced 
like the modern age, but it's still a great track that I also fell with. I fell in love with it when I first heard it on its own. It kind of has a lot of a huge build up to it that kind of builds up at the end. Like through most of it, uh, Julian has kind of still has some somber vocals or whatever, but in the end he kind of speeds it up a bit. Like the song speeds up, and you can hear him get louder and louder and more energetic. And one of my favorite parts about his voice is when he starts speaking like in a very gravelly tone when he's singing. And it's not bad gravelly like Chad Kroger, it's kind of has a cool effect where it kind of blends in with the instruments too and you can't really expect it. It almost sounds like a vocal effect on its own. And you hear that at towards the middle and the end of the track and it just kind of blew my mind when I first heard it and I was like, this, this, this is good. I'm saying this is going to be a good album. This is what sold the rest of the album for me. And I haven't gotten into my favorite parts yet. Next off the album we have the fourth track, Bare Legal. Which, I have to admit, is probably one of the weaker songs off the album. I mean, it's still a great song, but it doesn't really give me too much to talk about. It's a stereotypical stroke song where it's kind of fast-paced and energetic. I mean, I still love the song, but I don't have much to say about it. You know, it's usually like probably one of two songs off this album where I heard it out of the context of the album. I might just skip it just because I, I just... It doesn't do too much for me, but it's still a great track, even though it's slightly filler. It still fits in with the rest of the album and the overall tone that it sets. Okay, now I hope you're all ready for track number five, which is one of my favorite songs of all time, and my favorite track off the album, which is Someday. Like, everything about this track, I think, is perfect. Like, this is one of the few perfect songs I've ever heard. The instrumentation is nice and sharp. I love the little... Nice little slow guitar riff that we have throughout the song by Albert Hammond. Also a great drumming by Fabio and of course Julian Casablanca's vocals are pretty great off this album including his songwriting. I think it's some of the most heartfelt lyrics that the Strokes have ever had. And it's a, basically a story about this guy and the girl who were always talking about like someday we'll do this, someday we'll do that or whatever. And they never truly make a plan. But at the end, they start saying, hey, wait a second, we have a goal here. And sitting around, we're obviously not doing it. So instead of saying, someday this will happen, let's go out and get it. Let's not waste any more time. And I just love that, how it has a great message, great instrumental performances, great lyrics, and just great everything. And it's a perfect song to me. And I love it. It's my favorite song off the album. Now the next track, the sixth track, called Alone Together, I have to admit, the, between this and Barely Legal, uh, this is probably the weaker track off the album. It's still a good song, but I don't really have much to say about it because I don't really find myself listening to it outside of listening to that album in its entirety. And I'm usually too overblown by Someday to really pay too much attention, and I think it also that kind of hurts the song because, I mean, technically, it's not a song that grabs my attention when I listen to it, but it's also kind of hard with Sunday, who just stole the show from me. But I don't know, it's still a good song, but like I said, Bill Eagle is still kind of a stereotypical stroke song or whatever. It's still good, I still recommend you listen to it, but it's just not my favorite, if you know what I'm saying. Now next up, the seventh track off the album is Last Night, which is arguably the biggest single the Strokes have ever released and the most widely known. It's between that and Reptilia off the Room on Fire, but I actually prefer this song to Reptilia. Because this song is just like the first ever song I heard by them, you know? It's not like I can hate, I can't hate this song, like even if I tried, which, well, it kind of sounds stupid to say if I tried to hate it, but in fact, because in fact, I love this song. But I just feel like it got a tad too overplayed. But I don't know, it's got one of my favorite guitar solos of all time, Albert Hammond. Like, holy crap, what he's. Uh, an amazing guitarist, what can I say? And it's just like, I mean, the lyrics are kind of muzzled, muffled for me. Not muffled, but like, I can't really understand exactly what the story is. But it's still a great song, you know, like, the lyrics aren't that important. It's sonically, it's amazing. Well, one of the most iconic guitar riffs of the 2000s. And it's just a great song or whatever, and the perfect song if you're trying to get into the strokes. That is the first song that you want to hear. Hard to Explain is also one of the first songs I fell off, fell in love with off of this album, which is it's the 8-track off this uh, record. 
I have to say, it's just a great little stereotypical show song, and I mean, uh, it almost is in the category of Barely Legal and Alone Together, in my opinion. But this song is just so much better because it amps up the energy a little more. And the, po and the vocal performance that Julian Casablancas gives in the chorus is just amazing, and I, I, I would kill to be able to sing like that, the how he sings in the chorus. Because, well, if y'all listen to my voice right here, you can already probably tell I'm not the best singer in the world. But it's still just such a kick-ass tune, you know? Like, I love it, and it's just a perfect thing right after last night. Like, it doesn't get overshadowed like Alone Together is. It demands my attention, you know? And it fully has it, and it's a great fucking song. Now, the ninth track off the record, When It Started, has a pretty interesting backstory. You see, with the very first pressings of Is This It, it was shortly before the 9-11 attack. And before, when this started was off the album, they had a song uh, in New York City called New York City Cops, which is basically a song like, the chorus is New York City Cops, they ain't too smart. And I felt like that would be an inappropriate thing to keep on the record considering 9-11 and how much the cops had helped during that time and they so they replaced it with when it started which was originally an outtake not really an outtake off the album but it wasn't one of the albums they just had for the final cut so it's not really that strong but i still love it compared to alone together and barely legal just because it is a great song with great instrumentation and great per vocal performance number 10 track off the album we've got trying your luck which is a another great song or whatever and it's got some memorable lyrics for me and it's just talking about this person who's kind of like I guess you could call him like in the lower class sort of thing like he kind of just does what he wants or whatever and he often lives in I guess you could say he lives in poverty like and he's trying his luck or whatever trying all these new things and experiences when he isn't really doing living the best life that he can you know like and, but still, the narrative is great of this album, and the instrumentation and the vocals, again, are great. That's the story of this album. And you notice I'm not talking too much about lyrics. It's all about the instrumentation and the vocal performances for me, where it's just, the whole album is just so, so sonically pleasing, and I love it to death. Now, the last song off the album, which we have, is probably my favorite closing song off of any record in history, is the song Take It or Leave It for the 11th album off the track. Now, I consider this song to be another perfect sort of song. You know, like, it's hard to stop. I, well, I can't really, I don't really dis dissect the lyrics too much of this song. But, however, you notice that, like, it kind of has, like, a mid tempo ish sort of verses and pre chorus. But when you get to the chorus, it's the most off the walls thing I think the jokes have ever put out. And it just kind of blows my mind, you know? It's just all over the place, like, Julian Casablancas' vocal performances make him sound like he's in the scene this album. It's so intense and raw and filled with emotion where, well, as you can tell in this out, or with the show's catalog, Casablancas isn't a good technical singer at all. Like, you won't see him performing any ballads along with Miranda Lambert or any great singer or anything. He's just effective, and that's my best way to describe him as effective, and you can hear it. It just sounds like, he genuinely sounds like a man who's gone off his rocker or whatever, he's just going crazy. And that's basically what the song's lyrics summarize, is somebody kind of going crazy, you know, over a relationship. And it's just a perfect end finishing to me, and it leaves me wanting more, which is something you always want to do with an album. Well, y'all, that concludes my video for today. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and comment down below what exactly you think of this album, or what other albums you like to see me review down the road, or what songs you like to see me review when they end up being released or whatever. Anyway, I'm the Music Dictator, and what I say goes, for me at least.